here are two ways that you can provide your own training data or background knowledge for an AI in a no-code app, which you could be building with Bubble or any no-code platform out there. Um, and I'm gonna just talk about the pros and cons of each one. We're gonna be talking about uh, OpenAI's API in particular with chat completion, but also the assistance API pros and cons coming up. But before I launch into it, click the link down in the description if you want to learn more about building an app with Bubble and how to launch your startup and accelerate that process by joining our community and accessing all of the videos we've ever made on the topic of Bubble and no code. But let's start here. The chat completion endpoint is the basics. This is the uh, kind of the protocol, the manner of which we've been able to generate AI content uh, with text generation for year, couple of years now. Uh, and it works really well with Bubble because you each time you have to submit the whole history of the conversation. So we can see here in the example, here is the system prompt and then here is the user message. And then next message would be the assistance reply. And then if the user has a conversation, then it would be the user assistant, user assistant. And there to, to get the historical awareness of the conversation to work. For example, if you said, um, plan a trip to London, and then you asked a follow-up message saying, I'd like to go to the second recommendation, it would know what its second recommendation was only because you have supplied the whole history of messages each time you send the call. And most of our open AI videos, if you do a search for them, they work this way. And uh, as AI's advance, you know, it is, uh, there's like a new announcement every day, a serious new announcement every week, it seems. Um, the context window, that means how much data, how many tokens, and a token being kind of roughly a, a short word, three, four characters, how many tokens can you send uh, in that request to the API? And I remember the days when it was 8K. Well, GPT-4.0, is 128k tokens uh so you know that is a book a small book so if you want a really quick way if you're if you're going down that mvp purist route then i would suggest you find a way of taking any data that you want the ai to be aware of and you simply include it in messages at the start of the conversation. So if I was building a CRM and I wanted to add in AI features for my users, so perhaps they could query, uh, you know, what was that email that I received two weeks ago? Well, if you just list all of the emails, now be very aware of the, the privacy issues there could be with doing that, but if you were to list all of the, the emails in, say, the system prompt or even a, a user message that comes earlier in the conversation saying, here is the background data you need to know in order to answer the user's questions, you can just include all of that text, paragraphs, paragraphs, pages and pages of text into the prompt. And once it's in that message history, the AI should be able to use that for context. Now, the other way of going about this is the assistance API. And let's point out right from the top that this is in beta, which means that they could change it, how it works, how it interacts with your application. There's just a general rule that it's so easy to get burnt if you integrate beta uh, software into a production application. So there's your warning. But the assistance API has two advantages and actually quite a negative. I'm going to say that at the end. The two advantages are that you no longer have to track the full conversation. Imagine you've had 50 messages between your user and the assistant. Well, you don't have to necessarily store them all in your bubble app because the assistance API makes use of threads, which is how you group together messages. So now OpenAI is taking on the burden of uh, keeping track of the conversation. And all you need to do is add a message to a thread uh, and then run it for a assistant message to be generated and added on to the thread. The other advantage with assistance, uh, let me just see if I can quickly spot this, uh, is that assistance can be trained because you can supply files to them. I'm missing where that uh, vector store files, is this where they want? It's not really vectors. Okay, take my word for it. There is the ability, is it on threads? Threads? No, assistance. Oh, it's been a while since I looked at this. Files. 
Okay, yeah. When you upload a file, you can say that it is for an assistant, which means that you can provide like you know, a library of PDFs that then the assistant can draw data on. Now, do be aware that there are limitations here in terms of file size and how much you can host uh, per user. But you can approach it differently rather than having to supply all of the content in the opening message each time, which may well be quite expensive in the long run. Uh, you can use files to train the assistant. Now, here's the negative of using assistants, at least if you're working in bubble, which is that the process goes, you create an assistant, you create a thread, and then you start adding messages to the thread. When you want the AI to respond, you use run, but this does not inform your application when the AI has written a new message. Now, if the reply is really short, you've only got a few seconds, you could add in a pause and then you could recheck the thread for new messages. But if you're asking the AI to write something lengthy, it could take 10, 20 seconds. And you might not know, or you couldn't know how long that's gonna take. The fact is OpenAI does not inform your bubble app when a new message is created. So you have to keep checking. And this is something that Bubble is not optimized to do because you can have repeating workflows. You could say every one second on your page, check the thread and import new messages if need be. But it just, to me, that is far from optimal because you, you kind of just got an unlimited, uh, yeah, it's slow, but it's unlimited kind of production conveyor belt of workload units being used up to check if the assistant has finished, if the run command has finished, and whether a new message has been written. And it just seems really suboptimal to do that. Now, I would say that if you desperately need to use some of the other features of assistant, then yes, you can make it work with Bubble, and we've got videos, and other people have got videos how to do that. Uh, but it's far from optimal, and I'd be really concerned about the fact that OpenAI does not inform your Bubble app when a new message is written. That is in contrast, of course, to the chat completion endpoint, which when you send an API request, your Bubble app waits until it receives a response. It's kind of all done in that moment. It's drawn out if it's a longer reply, but you don't get that with assistance. So there you go. That is two ways. In fact, I'll give you a bonus third way if you've made it this, this point in the video, which is something that I'll put my hands up and say I've not delved into, which is vectors and using pinecone. This was before the assistance API, the original, the OG way of uh, ensuring that your bubble app had a large library of data uh, to, to train an, an assistant with. So have a Google for pinecone, bubble and open AI, and you may well find a third way to achieve this knowledge base, this background knowledge training of a custom GPT.